So I'm Elle Palmer. I'm the moderator. Um, until Ariadne is here, I can make up answers to my own questions too, if we need to. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, I write uh, my rain series is called The Pippington Tales. It is a fairy tale retelling series um, that basically takes uh, Down Abbey and then adds uh, in more magic and adventure. Um, so if you thought Down Abbey needed more sword fights, and magic battles, um, I would highly recommend my books. Uh, um, um, so Keith, why don't you introduce yourself? All right, my name is Keith Haas. I'm an anthropologist and a historian. I usually study intercultural history. That's when uh, cultures interact with each other. Uh, and I tend to specialize with video game culture and how it's expanded into its own culture in this world. However, for this case, uh, I have spent time with matriarchal societies, such as Native American cultures, uh, Jewish cultures, and others, that the women are in charge and the men are uh, less than that. So why don't you tell us about some of the, so you say you've actually spent time with some of these cultures? Mm -hmm. All right, so what are, what are some of these cultures you've spent time with? Uh, well, in high school, I was in the gifted program, and because it's in Washington, they don't know what a Mormon is, so they just mm -hmm. assumed I was Jewish. Okay. And they were just like, how often do you temple? And I'm like, once a month? And I, I was, I, I got a bar mitzvah out of it. That was fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. Really PO'd the rabbi when I did that. He was like, oh, congratulations, you're a Jewish man. Anyway, uh, I, uh, within cultures, within the cultures I've done, uh, Judaism is a matriarchal society. They trace their cultures back through their mother's line instead of through the father's line. And they often hand names down based on the matriarchal line, not the patriarchal. Line. So you'll, you'll actually see this uh, in some of the heritages or uh, some of the, the family trees. You'll see, oh, I think Ariadne is coming on. Hi. And hi do you have video hey yeah can see ariadne uh ariadne why don't you take a minute to to um uh introduce yourself and uh keith was just talking about uh the matriarchal structure of judaism and so we can get back into that uh, but why don't you tell us how great you are thanks um my name is ariadne kane i go by ari um I'm a, I write middle grade fantasy and teen sci-fi. Um, I also, my mother's family is matriarchal in that um, essentially the mothers are the ones that, you know, assert all the power and, and really run the family. Um, so that's my claim to fame for this particular panel. But you were saying that we were talking about, um, sorry, say that again, Laura. Judith. What were we talking about? Judaism. Judaism. Yeah, okay. Judaism. Keith is probably doing a better job pronouncing the word. Yeah. It's okay. Trust me, you mispronounce a word. They'll tell you. Uh, Ariadne, are you still there? Yes. Okay. Sorry. You've you frozen up on me, so. Okay. Hopefully that won't happen. Crossing yeah. fingers. If, if nothing yeah. else, we can, we can hear you. And so just keep going like we can see you, um, and I think we're going to be okay. Okay. This is like a news, a live news uh, shot, only uh, we've got weird equipment going on. How are the bombings going on? Great! Anyway, uh, back to Judaism. Uh, within Judaism, it used to be a patriarchal society. Things were handed down from father to son, and the name and lineage would be passed around there. Sometime in the last 2000 years, it has switched. And the women are one of the more powerful, are the more powerful groups. If you want something done, you go to the women. You talk to the women's society. And we just lost Ariadne. And you know, that that's just how it, how it works. Uh, often when you talk to Jewish women, they just assume they are in charge and they get kind of insulted when you're like, well, you know, I, I don't really want to do what you want to do. Uh, oh, gosh. I was in a play called uh, Fiddler on the Roof, which is a very yeah. Jewish play. 
very yes. Jewish. And they call they they thought I was Jewish, so they gave me the part of the rabbi. And yeah. A uh, story about your high school experience. Yeah, um, I should. And what was really interesting is they had three different women who were telling us what was Jewish and what wasn't. And because I was the rabbi, they were constantly pushing me back and forth like, oh, no, that's not what a rabbi would do. You go back, you go tell them this is what a rabbi would do. Mm -hmm. And so at some point, it felt like I was playing tennis, you know, I'm, I'm going back and forth, back and forth. And I'm finally like, ah, and then I hear one person go, that's three love, darling. Yeah, and, well, uh, I, I think I think what's a really a challenge uh, with Judaism um, is that there are so many different factions that they have oh, Orthodox true. Jews and and yeah. things that they have. The core beliefs might be very similar, but there's cultural pieces that are so oh, yeah. different. Yeah, uh, when we're talking about matriarchal and stuff, we, it's usually. The less orthodox one they are not you're not going to see the little uh yamulka you're not going to see uh the more traditional things honestly the way they treat it in this kind of culture is it's more of a, a ethnic thing instead of a religious thing yeah they don't go to temple because they believe in god they go to temple because that is their traditions and that is how they want to continue their culture so that's how they do things uh they created a bar mitzvah for women called a bat mitzvah and the rabbi in charge of it will be a woman, and it's very similar to to what um, most. Actually, now that I think about it, what do you guys know about you know the bar mitzvah? Um, I know it's a coming a uh, coming of age. Um, yeah. I also my brain goes to Thirty Rock and the song Werewolf Bar Mitzvah, but I don't think <laughs> that that's a fair representation. Um, <laughs> But why don't we why don't we uh, talk a little bit about kind of some so that's kind of a interesting modern it's almost a subculture um, mm -hmm. within other cultures um, right and if, yeah have you interacted with any cultures that that um, that that is the more of the predominant culture of their or of their society yes I've lived in the Navajo Res and I've worked with many. Uh, Native American cultures, and all most of them are matriarchal. If you want a name, you ask the uh, the matriarch. If you uh, look, all of the houses are pointed towards the matriarch's house. So wherever she is, all the houses are kind of pointed at her. And the head of the council will always be the daughter instead of the men. And you, you'll just see this. Well, the more interesting aspect is most cultures outside don't realize that they're matriarchal so they'll come in expecting to see men discussing with men on subject and nothing gets accomplished until the women give them approval so you'll go into uh and you know it's early so i can't remember the exact term here but you'll go into kind of the the deciding area and you'll see these men sitting there going, oh, well, what is the vote? And then they'll look off into the, the back of the area, which is the honorary site, site for the, the great the great people. And the, the older women will be sitting there. And if they nod, it's approved. And if they shake their head like this, it's not approved. And they'll just be like, oh, well, you know, we, we need to look into this a little bit more. Uh, another thing that you know, you're, you're probably not going to be accustomed to is women are totally allowed to kick men out of the house, which doesn't sound too bad. But if a man is kicked out of the house when it's negative 20 degrees, everybody in that area will be like, well, if you got kicked out of the house, you're no longer allowed in houses right now. And he has a possibility of dying, of freezing to death. So, you know, when you study matriarchal societies, you have to realize they're not always as nice as everybody wants them to be. Uh, there are some wonderful things about them, and there are also some pretty hard things about them. I think one of the questions you had is, uh, what is the difference between a matriarchal and a patriarchal society? You know, what mm -hmm. do they look like? And I think uh, that's the reason why people screw them up is they often look exactly alike. They have the same jobs, they have the same uh, things that they do, 
Uh, for example, in the Navajo Res, the men go out, they go work, they go, go work outside, and the women stay inside, they weave, they, you know, prepare food and stuff. It's just their cultures emphasize the making of food, the bearing of children, the making of blankets more than whatever the man makes. So the man made the house, but the woman was able to gain favors by making rugs and blankets. The loom is considered, you know, this very important thing, and it's passed down from uh, from mother to daughter and from grandmother to granddaughter. Uh, I got to participate with that a little bit. Um, I learned how to weave, and I was allowed into the, the matriarchal society that way a little bit. And uh, although a lot of people think that that means that everybody just assumed I was gay or something, no, every single little old lady there was like, oh, you should talk to my granddaughter. She's really nice. And I was like, uh, thank you. No, I'm good. So it, uh, matriarchal societies just, they look exactly like a patriarchal society, only the women are in charge. Uh, I'll actually give an example of a, a culture that you probably didn't realize was matriarchal. Have you seen the show Avatar, The Last Airbender? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Sokka and Katara, their, their tribe is matriarchal. Look who makes the decision. It's their grandmother. Look who, uh, when Katara talks to people, she very much so has a I'm in charge, you must do as I say type of view. When Sokka refers to his younger sister, he gives her deference. He actually respects her. There are times where he says, you know, she's more like my mom than my mom. And it's because in their society, she is actually above him. And it, it, it actually really changed my opinion when I realized that was happening because Sokka actually has to break from his own uh, tribe to find his own worth. And it's difficult for him because he doesn't view himself very highly. Yeah. Um, so our, so um, I think a really good question is how do we do, do you find that we kind of idolize matriarchal society? Um, or um, idealize, not idolize, but idealize, like um, with our, or do we have kind of a, do we feel like we have a realistic view of matriarchal societies or do we misunderstand them? Ariadne, why don't you start? Cause yeah. I'm back. While you're here. Um, While you're here. Okay, so the question is, do we idealize matriarchal societies? Um, it kind of depends. Um, in some ways we do, um, from the feminist perspective, we do make them out to be these, um, you know, fantastical utopias. Um, but then they also get denigrated and there is a lot of debate as to whether or not they even truly technically exist because the definition is so open to interpretation. That's true. Uh, it's one of those things where we forget that even in a matriarchal society, the man still has authority, he still has power, he still has decisions he can make. Mm -hmm. And we sometimes assume that uh, in a in any society, the, per, the the sex that is in charge is the one who makes all the decisions, which isn't true. Uh, even in our own society today, and you know, in very patriarchal areas, you can see women, you know, convincing men to do things, making decisions, moving things forward. And we sometimes forget that that's that that's there. We just assume that the men walk men walk in and go, "This is my decision. It shall be done." And the women go, "Yes, dear." I love you. Which no, typ <laughs> typically what happens is the man says, this is my decision. And then his wife pulls him aside and says, are you sure about that? Um, and then many times if he's wise, he'll change his decision. Yeah. Uh, in the wheel of time series, I, I thought it was a great, great statement. Uh, both the women uh, and the men have the saying that, you know, you, you let them have the, the, the decisions they want to have. And then you, you make sure to do the things that you know are needed. 
and they're both saying this about the other sex. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's a that's a common theme in a lot of cultures. They they emphasize different things, and so they're going to think about decisions from different points of view. Uh, but in matriarchal societies, the, the way we idealize them, we assume that mothers are going to be kind, sweet, uh, benevolent, that they're not going to do certain things, that wars are going to happen less, that, you know, society as a whole will just get together and be happy. And there is absolutely no historical evidence of that. I, I apologize. Um, they're just as warlike. They're just as likely to put people in in uh, danger. In some cases, there have been more wars because the women were in charge and they couldn't care less about their soldiers. They're like, I want glory. I'm going to send men who I don't care about to go to war for me. And yeah, some really awful things happen. So it it does get idealized because we imagine a utopia. Any utopia, really. Uh, when you imagine a utopia, I'm going to give you two terms. There is the utopia's um, garbage man. It doesn't matter what utopia you have. There's going to have to be somebody taking care of the garbage, and we always forget that. And then you have utopia's asshole, and that is somebody who specifically breaks the rules for their own power. And they will, if they destroy society, they don't care. And so you always have to remember that those two will be in any society that you think of whether women are in charge, men are in charge, or uh, dick dicks, which are a weird little uh, goat creature from Africa, are in charge. Um, so, Arne, Arne, do you have any particular society, matriarchal society, that you think of as an example that you think is super fascinating? Um, I have actually been looking into the, um, I think it's pronounced, Musu in China? Yeah. Um, it's M O U or sorry, M O S U O. Um they're they're actually they've been around for a really long time. They're currently recognized as a ethnic minority in China. Um and it's just it's kind of a fascinating society because um it's so different from, you know, Western standard culture. Um, and it's so like the power structure, um, is mothers, mm -hmm. you know, um, each family has their matriarch. Um, and then the, essentially the men will live with their mothers for their, the entirety of their lives. Um, so it, it's the same, but it's very different. Um, they actually linguistically do not have a word for husband or for father. They mm -hmm. have what we have called walking marriages. Um, essentially, the women, when they want to have a marital partner or a spouse, they will go find or they will go walk to the house of the man's mother, spend the night, and then they'll leave. They don't live together. Um, and if they decide to break off that relationship, it's done and over. And there's, you know, no fuss about it from either side. I'm sure that there probably is, but in a generalization, there isn't. Uh, I know the people you're talking about. I've always called them the Mo people. Uh, but Mosul is, is good, I guess. Uh, and it's interesting because the men all have a place that they can stay in that's outside of the women's society. It's a one-room hut that they can all sleep in. And if they're, you know, not good with the women, they just go sleep there. And it's actually right next to the barn. They're they're treated almost like cattle at times. And the women do not get their own room until they are, how do we say this, sexually ready. And that is the reason why they get their room is they are allowed to have sex. There you go. You got to figure out how to uh, 
continue your society some way or another. That yeah. makes that makes another sense. Um, you guys have any other examples? So we've talked about uh, the Navajo woman. We've talked about the matri matrilineal um, development of of Judaism, um, and then and then about the, these women from China. That's me avoiding mispronouncing. Um, and uh, um, do you guys have any other examples that you wanted to share? Uh, in Mongolian cultures, there are a few matrilineal uh, matriarchal societies. You can actually tell a matriarchal society based on their mythology. If their mythology really emphasizes women, they tend to be a matriarchal society. Like in Navajo culture, all great knowledge came from women. You are, you know, father is sky and he's kind of up there, but mother is earth and she takes care of you. All knowledge came from uh, women. Uh, they learned to weave from a woman called Spider Woman. And there's a specific rock where she came down and taught the people and then went back up to. And it was near where I lived in the Navajo Res, so I got to go see it. And it's it's actually really cool. cool. Uh, and that is where all knowledge came from, was from this area. And it's spread out throughout the Navajos through the women. So if you want to recognize a matriarchal society, you have to see who, do, who are they emphasizing within their mythology and within their culture. Um, along the same lines as the Bribri from Costa Rica, um, they're matrilineal, um, so everything gets handed down through the women, um, names, but they also have a legend about the, the cacao or cocoa tree, um, their gods turned it into, or turned a woman into the tree, um, so all of them have sprung from women, they're within their religion, they actually have a sacred drink that can only be prepared by priestesses um, mm -hmm. from the cocoa tree. So it's kind of the, you know, along the same lines, like their religion venerates the women and yeah. they're the ones that technically have the power. And that drink is very awful if you ever tried it. Very bitter. They forget to add spices and stuff. <laughs> uh. I think one of the more interesting aspects is when a patrilineal society tries to deal with a matrilineal society. And that's that's really uh, when I was when I signed up, what I, I was thinking about was how many times I've seen a, a, patri a patriarchal society just assume that they're talking to another patriarchal society because it looks very similar. And they walk in and they go, OK, who's in charge? They talk, go talk to the men. They get the men to make a decision and they assume that the decision is made. We, we see this throughout Native American cultural history where, you know, a war breaks out, the general of the arm of the European army comes in and he goes and he talks to who he assumes is the person in charge. And this guy is like, uh, yeah, yeah, OK, yeah, sure, sure. Let me tell my let me ask my wife. Can, can I ask my wife? Can I can I go talk to my wife? And the general is like, no, no, you need to make your decision now. This is this is important. and even to this day, there are people who don't realize that they're walking into a matriarchal society when you're on a reservation. And this is a lot of reservations and a lot of native peoples throughout the Americas. Like you can, you'll find it all the way down in the Guarani in uh, South America, all the way to uh, Alaskan Inuit. So it's, it's a very common thing. It's just most people don't notice it because they assume, actually, let's, let's ask a question. What do we assume matriarchal societies are supposed to look like? And the point that what you're talking about happens to women when they go like to buy a car um, and there happens to be a man with them, but they assume that the man the one is going to make the decision, even though the woman's the one with the money and is going to make the decision on the car. And I yeah. think that is a, is a kind of a micro example that we, we project. It's so easy to project our, our cultural assumptions on onto another society and that's yeah. kind of what i was and i think your question is kind of what i was trying to get at what do we what do we think a matriarchal look society looks like versus what it actually looks like um and i think your point on 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 how that that conflict of culture 
not understanding that culture coming in um, is a really, really an interesting and good issue. And for all you writers out there, great source of conflict when you're building your cultures for your fantasy world or your sci-fi sure. world. Yeah. A lot of people I meet who ask me about patriarchal societies assume that the women are these great warriors and that the men are kind of petite, put on makeup, and they go, oh, I'm just going to stay in the house. And I've never seen it's, it's I, I don't see that happen a lot. I've seen women warriors, and that is common throughout uh, traveling societies, but that doesn't mean it's a matriarchal society. It just means that they don't care as much. Ariadne, right, did, did you want to add to that? Kind of what um, the expectations are? Yeah, there is, there very much is that expectation of this is the direct correlation to a patriarchal society. Um, but just as no two patriarchal societies are exactly the same, there's no direct correlation between, you know, you're comparing apples and oranges. Um, they're both societies, they're both round, but they're very different colors. And what actually comes, you know, what actually is the meat of the society is different. Um, you know, we expect strong, forceful women. We expect them to be warriors or, um, you know, the direct opposite of a male leader. However, a lot of times that is not, um, you know, either the women are, you know, they have different leadership styles or they have different, um, command structures even, um, you know, the, losing all my words, sorry. Um, anyways, that's, you know, where I'm driving is that um, the look of the society is going to often be different. Um, you know, who's in charge, how they're in charge, who makes decisions, is that one person in charge versus another. And it's going to be different between different matriarchal societies as well. Yeah. I've seen this as a com common trope in uh, sci-fi is, you know, the reversal, the women are the warriors. Futurama had an episode where the, the women were all these masculine creatures. Uh, Wonder Woman is kind of based on that same idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, even Star Trek, The Next Generation, had an episode like that. And that's often what people assume uh, a matriarchal society will look like. And I have to be, go in and be like, no, just imagine, uh, you know, a women's society being in charge. And it, it's so simple that it's difficult to take in sometimes. I mean, a clear example is, I mentioned that my mother's family is more uh, matriarchal. Um, my mom's family is Irish Catholic that immigrated to New England. Um, but, and so technically it should be patriarchal. And, you know, the men went out and they, you know, made the money and came back. But the women were the ones who made all the decisions. You went to grandma's house. You didn't go to grandpa's house. You went to grandma's house. And, you know, during family gatherings, there were, you know, all of the women were in a group and the men were kind of off on the side, um, you know, and the men could socialize and they were invited and they could help make decisions. But ultimately, in my mom's family, the mothers make the decisions. Yeah, that, that is a, a common thing I've seen. My grandmother is very similar. Uh, my grandfather's mother passed away, so he was raised by his sister. And he married a woman who we compare to Thor and other uh, amazing Norse gods. If she showed up with Thor's hammer and destroyed a mountain, we would be more shocked that it existed than that she had it. We'd be like, oh yeah, that, that's, that's acceptable, but you had it the entire time? Uh, you know, they're, they're, they can be a very force of nature. One of the things I think is how they, they ha try to persuade each other. Instead of uh, the way a man would do it, which is often negotiating, trying to find, you know, special deals and stuff, they'll often use encouragement that you'll not see in a patriarchal society. Uh, my grandmother, for example, will just walk up to me and be like, okay, this is what you need to work on for your Eagle Scout. I've written everything down. You've been doing this and you've been missing this. You, you need to work on this and this. 
And without even thinking about it, I'll just do as she says, because she's grandma, she has the authority, she has the power. And so it was really easy for me to go into a, a matriarchal society because I already had a good idea. Mm. And this, this is actually getting into another subject. Uh, there are societies that are turning matriarchal right now, and we haven't figured it out because we assume it's patriarchal. Do you have examples of that? Uh, ever heard of the Relief Society? Yes. What? Yeah. It's happened three or four times where we had to change certain things or certain power structures because the ma the matriarchy was, in fact, in charge of decisions in the church to the point that the men had no say. Uh, back in the day, we didn't have tithing. We had... Uh, you know, bake sales and all that. So who was in charge of bake sales? Who was in charge of, you know, all the activities going on? Who was in charge of all these things going on? It was the women. So for, I don't know how long, the women were actually in charge, but everything was structured for men. And so it became this really major conflict on how to do things. To this day, I have been in bishops councils where, you know, we'll say something is wrong and immediately the Relief Society will give the answers, say what needs to be done, and the men will be like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll clean their yard. And it's a really sad thing because a lot of men need to, to step up, but they, they're scared that they're overstepping their boundaries or something, which if it continues the way it is, and there's a lot of debate on the matter on whether or not, you know, people of Utah will become a matriarchal society without realizing it. Well, living in Texas, Just blew your mind. it's different. Uh, it's interesting living in different regions and seeing how similar something with a similar culture and background is implemented slightly differently, having lived in three different states. Um, but um, yeah, I think there's, it's a, it's a careful, careful balance. Um, and you have to look at the difference between is it a matriarchal society or is it that there's a shared power um, and and who feels where that power balance is. Um, let's see here. Um, we have some good questions, so I'm going to actually start questions a little bit early. Okay. Um, um, and then, and so one of them, and I think we kind of touched on this a little bit, um, is do female-led societies make different decisions than male-led society, particularly in the areas of technology, politics, and warfare? Ooh. It's a good question. This is why I was like, yeah. let's go that early. Um, Ariadne, do you want to? Well, the short answer is yes and no. I mean, it depends on the society. Um, like you were mentioning earlier, there are societies led by women who are just as likely to go to war or to, you know, um, either suppress or encourage technology or technological advancements um, as male society um, or patriarchy. It really depends on the society. Um, what I have observed uh, through anthropology and other just moving around and stuff is that we often look at men and women in the same way. It's just we're emphasizing which one isn't more important. So often, it doesn't matter where you are, the women are in charge of the house and the men are in charge of outside. Mm -hmm. And this isn't always true, but this tends to be a common thing. So women will look for things that will make their house better and their power within that house look better. Whereas men will look for things outside and whether or not that will become better. So you'll see a lot of engineering for the outside when it's a patriarchal society. And for a matriarchal society, you'll see a lot more uh, communication systems. You'll see a lot more uh, usage of, uh, well, I don't know how to say this. Photoshop was designed by women. Um, the, the programmer was male, but he was asking women how to how to make it. 
uh, I know I, I've got gotten to interview that team. And they were very honest about it. So, cool. you know, certain artistic styles will be different based on the matri matriarchal society. Women will try to make things look a lot more beautiful, uh, a lot more, you know, they'll emphasize the beauty of what they're looking at. They'll make sure that the shot doesn't have clutter, that it will be a little bit neater looking, because what they're really looking for uh, is to show their place in society. And that's generally where the conflicts actually happen is a lot of women's societies try to work to make uh, themselves look better than someone else. And that's a lot of wars happen because they want to rise up and lower someone else. And that kind of conflict does create a lot of uh, problems. Whereas men will find that the negotiation didn't work right or the, the, the outside thing like, oh, he's stealing my cattle. I'm going to go, I'm going to go grab him. Uh, the matriarchal society won't care. They'll be like, well, do we need those cows? But if the woman says, well, your house looks like mud, you may find, uh, you know, armies coming at you and quite vicious, honestly. You're going to so, get a throw down with an insult like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, a joke I tell people is we often think Photoshop makes us look beautiful, you know, makes gets rid of our wrinkles, gets rid of that kind of stuff. But I'm like, you know, we do the same thing with our house. We aim the shot correctly. Then we get rid of the clutter with the Photoshop and we make the house look nicer. And we can do that with anything in our house. And... What's interesting is men will try to make their car look better because it's an outside thing, whereas women will try to make their house look better. And every conflict you, you will have will be within that kind of, uh, not every, but most conflicts will be coming from that idea. And most technological advancements will be coming from that idea. Uh, if you really want to know, a lot of major companies have a very large women's division in the area and it can butt against the way the men want to do the programming. And it's, it's a fascinating subject. If you ever want to go into it, just don't pick sides. Just don't better for you. If you don't pick, pick a side, but they are, there is conflict within there because the women want to be in charge and they want things to work within the way women believe things should be working. And the men, are completely oblivious to it because they want things to work the way they think things should work. And so it becomes a conflict even in today's society within companies that you uh, don't even realize are happening. Like uh, YouTube or Google have these conflicts happening right now. Another question we had is what is the process when a society switches? So, how can we see uh, the, that development between the matriarchal and patriarchal society kind of switching? That it goes from patriarchal to matriarchal or vice versa? Does it happen over generations or can it happen in one generation because of a very charismatic leader? Um, do you guys have any examples of that or thoughts on that? Well, I think we used uh, an example already. You know, we have many matriarchal societies happening just be, from immigrant groups entirely because the men would go out and work, but they couldn't keep the house going. So because of that, the women became very much so in charge of the families. And, you know, the men kind of demunitized themselves. So what you're really saying is who was keeping the culture together? Who was keeping, you know, things going? And if it's the women keeping things going, it can happen even in a few years where the women are suddenly in charge and they're emphasizing female things. Or, you know, suddenly we're having to move a lot and we're having to do a lot of, you know, trade. You'll find that men suddenly become in charge. And it can happen like that. Uh, I'm actually, oh, sorry. Uh, interesting aspect. Within Chinese society, uh, I'm going to be teaching Chinese mythology 
later today. Uh, within the lower caste system, there is actually a matriarchal society for the trade group because the women will be in charge of selling at the table, whereas the men will go out and try to buy and sell and trade. And you'll find that, you know, that is an actual, there's actual terms for the, the boss wife, as it's called in China. So, you know, is it trading over to a matriarchal society within the this lower caste? It's unknown. We're, we're still observing it. But it is something that's been known for generations. Vice versa, sometimes it can take a very long time. Like, there are a lot of Irish and Scottish cultures that started out matriarchal um, or even more um, of an equal society, um, but that have been moving towards the patriarchy for literally now two millennia. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, and that is still an evolving situation um, because a lot of it was enforced on the political society, but not necessarily within the family. Uh, yeah. So it can take centuries to do it as well. Is there another um, question or? Yeah, yeah. I was just scrolling through the questions, oh. uh, making sure I've got kind of touched on things. Um, does, we've got about five minutes left. Um, does a matriarchal society eliminate, this one specifically talks about women's sexism, but I would say sexism in either way, with for either gender. Um, can a society end up being sexist and matriarchal? Yes. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like there's some trauma there. Uh, when I was in the Navajo reservation, we were trying to buy some land for, uh, a building and all the, the people in charge were from outside of the Navajo res and they were trying to buy this land and they were talking to all the men and they kept on getting pushed away and they didn't understand. And when I was in the, the, the weaving circle, they finally told me, why are they sending these men? They should send women to decide on the land. We keep telling them, go away. We don't like men. And, you know, that's a very common thing where, what are you doing? You're not important enough to talk to me. And it, that, <laughs> that's an actual thing. So, yes, there is a lot of sexism within matriarchal societies. Um, there are some developing societies as well. Um, especially in Africa, um, where they are forming literal no man's lands. Um, you know, the, a lot of these societies are women who have um, fled violence, specifically sexual violence. Um, but, um, and some of them are so new that they have children, but it has yet to be determined what's going to happen with the male children in these societies because literally men are not allowed on their property. Like mm -hmm. they're not allowed within the village. And yeah. there, that, there is that developing almost warlike stance of we're going to protect and insulate this village against anyone who is a man. This has happened a couple of times before and what happened, and I, I can't remember the names of the society, so forgive me. Uh, the women decided that they were going to have their be in charge, so they created their own city, and then they had a separate city for men. Mm -hmm. And that's, and oh gosh, you, you kind of felt sorry for them because they never let the men have any power, and they, you know, it, it was a matriarchal society, so the men were denigrated a bit. Yeah, and you know, I don't want to say that these women aren't justified in, in what they're doing because um, they are fleeing violence. And, you know, a lot of them have had incredibly heinous things done to them. Um, but that does, once you start insulating in an all-female society and not even ostracizing, but actually prohibiting men, it does become a very sex.
got about two or three minutes left. Um, so if you have any final thoughts and then a shameless plug for either if you have another panel today or some, some, something awesome that you wanted to share uh, where people can find you online or a, a project you got coming up. Ariadne, you go ahead. Okay. Um, I have one more panel left today. I am on Strong Female Protagonists at three. Um, I will be moderating that panel. Um, you can find me online. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, I have one book out, and I hope to have another book out probably at the beginning of next year. Um, that's me. Keith? All right. I have five or six more panels today, and they're all cultural for the most part. That's amazing. The anthropologist has to do culture. Uh, and um, if you want to check out more of my research and stuff, check out check out uh, Native Video Gamer on YouTube, and I'll I'll always have links to other stuff I'm doing there. Uh, and I do have a book coming out called Clockwork Elf. I'm working to find an artist right now, and I've given and I think it's edited enough. I don't I don't know if they finished, but I'm going. It's done kind of my opinion on the matter. So uh, it's coming out sometime this year. I don't know when. It was supposed to come out last year, but COVID. 